Welcome back everyone, I'm your host Reem and today on another Research Spotlight episode here at Synthesis Workshop, we will be diving into Shubham's research. Shubham is a graduate student from the Smith Group at the University of St. Andrews in the UK and his research addresses the challenges of synthesizing highly substituted phthalate esters, focusing on a new catalytic method for the tricky tetrasubstituted versions. The applications of this work could really transform the field of natural product synthesis and drug development. So let's get right into it. Hi. I'll be talking about isothiourea catalyzed dynamic kinetic resolution of tetrasubstituted thalites. So before delving into the details of the project, first I would like to introduce the basics of kinetic resolution and dynamic kinetic resolution. Kinetic resolution involves the different reactivity of enantiomers in a racemic mixture where one enantiomer reacts faster than the other ideally yielding 50% of enantio pure product and 50% of enantio pure starting material. On the other hand, in dynamic kinetic resolution, it includes an additional factor which is racemization and racemization is basically the interconversion equilibrium between the two enantiomers. In the DKR, the fast reacting enantiomer produces the final product simultaneously the slow reacting enantiomer racemizes to become the fast reacting enantiomer allowing for the complete conversion and 100% yield of the enantio pure product the rate of racemization should be significantly faster than the rate of reaction of the slow reacting enantiomer the final product you form should not racemize under the reaction condition and you need a compatibility between both racemization and kinetic resolution. The key to understand the DKR lies in the racemization which I will be talking about in the following slides. Among the methods available for the racemization, one I will be talking about is the proton transfer. And a classic example of it is the racemization of hydrantoins in the presence of base via this inolate formation. This particular methodology is currently being in use in the industry and well developed. The second method uh, of racemization is the hydride transfer, and uh, this uh, has been exemplified by the back wall using this source complex and. The source complex, which is a ruthenium hydride complex, was used as a racemization catalyst, which, uh, which racemizes this particular alcohol via the ketone intermediate and via the reversible hydride addition. So the limitation of the both hydride transfer and proton transfer based racemization is that you need uh, hydrogen either at the stereogenic center or alpha to the stereogenic center. Systems lacking hydrogen at these positions cannot be studied via these racemization modes. So a different type of racemization known in the literature which is the ring opening and ring closing uh, racemization. It proceeds via the ketone intermediate and uh, in 2020 and 2021 Chi and Jang have utilized this type of uh, racemization in the, in the thalide based systems uh, use utilizing NHC and imidazole catalysts. This type of uh, work has been reported on the tri-substituted uh, alcohols that means the four substituent is hydrogen. These sort of systems are easy to racemize because of the low steric hindrance. These type of systems are also well reactive towards the acylation. For the systems lacking the hydrogen as a fourth substituent such as fully substituted carbon, alkyl or aryl substituted carbon, the racemization is difficult via ring opening and ring closing mechanism. Also the reactivity of such alcohols is sluggish during the resolution reaction. In this regard, there is one report from the EA group in 2021 who have utilized uh, the NHC catalysis to do the dynamic kinetic resolution of perfluorinated carbon uh, alcohols, so CF3 substituted alcohols. So such type of racemization and such type of DKR is very rare in the literature where the carbon is fully substituted. 
Now I would like to introduce our uh, hyperbutium isothiourea catalyst, which is a Lewis base isothiourea catalyst. It features a nucleophilic nitrogen, a chalcosan atom for the chalcosan bonding, a fused ring for the stabilization of the transition state, isopropyl group as a conformation lock, and a phenyl group as a stereodirecting group. Here is the crystal structure for your reference. Now, there's one report from our group uh, for the kinetic resolution of the tertiary alcohols where the energy selectivity was great and the selectivity factor was up to 200 utilizing this hyperbutium isothiourea catalyst. The mechanism involves uh, first the reaction of the hyperbutium with the anhydride to form this acyl ammonium intermediate so this note notice this intermediate is cationic in nature following by the attack of the alcohol to form the acylated product and the catalyst being regenerated by the base the transition state involves that uh, interaction of the carbonyl of the starting material with the cationic intermediate. This cationic intermediate uh, was recognized as the recognition motive and the DFT calculated energies uh, when this carbonyl was interacting with the cationic intermediate and when this pi system was interacting with this cationic intermediate, the difference in energy was found to be 3.5 kilocal per mole and this top uh, transition state was found to be the favorable transition state. So now the hypothesis of the project was to develop a DKR method for the challenging tetra substituted systems using our hyperbutium isothiourea catalysis. We have chosen this 3-hydroxythalide uh, because it contains a labile chiral center and these are key motifs in various natural products and drug candidates. We aim to utilize this uh, ring opening ring closing mode of recycization to achieve a DKR in these particular tetra substituted or fully substituted thalide systems. The mechanism would involve the nucleophilic uh, reaction of the catalyst with the anhydride to form this acyl uh, ammonium intermediate and which then react with the alcohol to form the uh, enantiomer rich acylated product. We began our uh, optimization uh, with the substrate having methyl as the fourth substituent here and achieved a hit. Extensive optimi optimization later was performed and uh, uh, for example, we started with different solvents. So from entry 1 to entry 4, we, we have got uh, the chloroform as the best solvent. And then we further optimization utilizing base, uh, temperature and different parameters revealed that entry 9 where chloroform potassium carbonate at minus 20 gave optimum yield and optimum energy selectivity. Further, uh, when methyl group was changed to phenyl and ethyl, the reactivity decreased. Although the Nancy selectivity was high, but the reactivity decreased a lot. So this could be due to the increased steric hindrance around that carbon, which, which diminished the rate of racemization and uh, which also inhibit the reactivity towards the DKR conditions. Therefore, further optimization was pursued and was found that for the aryl substrate, 50 degree temperature and lutidine was optimal, giving 82% of yield. For, and for the alkyl substituents, uh, zero degree temperature and lutidine as a base was chosen. Next, the generality of the re reaction was explored by varying the different substituent at that carbon. First, we increase the carbon linear chain, then branched, and even, for example, molecule 4, where you have a terbutyl group, which generally does not work in the resolution reaction, tolerated well, gave excellent yield and excellent selectivity. Both electron donating and uh, electron withdrawing groups on the aryl ring were also well tolerated. The method was then applied to heterocycles uh, such as thiophene, uh, although it shows diminished reactivity and this could be 
due to the electron rich nature of the thiophene which is actually disrupting the transition state by interacting with the cationic intermediate and uh, later on this methodology was applied to six membered lactol systems as well and for example molecule 16 gave excellent yield and excellent energy selectivity we then investigated the variations in the thalide ring and finding that the dimethyl, even dichloro, even very electron deficient tetrafluorine, tetrabromo, well tolerated along with the fuge systems such as naphthalene also gave great yield and great energy selectivity. Next, we explored the variations in the anhydride part to generate a general method for preparing a range of thalide esters. Simple anhydrides such as acetic anhydride, propionic anhydride, phenylacetic anhydride, and the simple uh, branched one like uh, uh, cyclopentane and cyclohexane based anhydrides are also well tolerated. Uh, very bulky anhydrides such as diphenylacetic anhydride also give great in yield and great in energy selectivity. We have got uh, naphthyl based and biphenyl based anhydrides as well. Now we challenged our DKR method by incorporating various medicinally relevant carboxylic acid motifs uh, within our thyroid esters and anhydrides of uh, commercially available drugs and natural products uh, were subjected uh, in our DKR process and all gave like high yielding in insurance products. For example, molecule 35 uh, which is uh, thalide esters of uh, derived from the endomethacin. So this particular motive is endomethacin and uh, this particular whole uh, molecule is a uh, tetra substituted version of known product telmetacin. And other examples uh, also features the range of functionalities in the molecule and range of different drug candidates. Next uh, the reaction was scaled up to the gram scale uh, to uh, demonstrate applicability of the methodology in the large scale synthesis and result shows the consistent yield and energy selectivity as observed during the small scale reaction. Then the monitoring of the reaction was done and we found that the energy selectivity of the ester product remained constant throughout the reaction time during an effective DKR process. Then we draw a simplified general mechanism of this DKR process where first the uh, acylation uh, or, or the nucleophilic uh, attack of this uh, hyperbetium catalyst uh, with the anhydride to form this acyl ammonium intermediate which is cationic in nature which preferentially reacts with one of the fast reacting alcohol to form the acylated product and the catalyst being regenerated by using the base. Now to understand the factors leading to high enantiomer selectivity, we probed the interaction between the substrate potential pi system as well as oxygen heteroatom uh, lone pair <clears throat> interaction with the cationic intermediate. And uh, you see this oxygen sulfur bonding acts as a conformation lock, whereas this isobutyrate ion actually deprotonates the alcohol and engages in non-classical hydrogen bonding with the uh, this cationic catalyst. Well, the high energy selectivity requires a donor uh, motif in the substrate to interact with the cationic intermediate and we, we have two potential electron donor motif in the substrate one is the oxygen lone pair other is the pi system so these two potential uh, motif interaction with the catalyst had been probed via the dft studies and what is found that the oxygen lone pair interaction with the cationic complex is stabilized over when this pi motif of the substrate interacting with the cationic complex and this stabilization was 2.5 one kilocal per mole for the terbutyl substituent and the predicted enantiomeric ratio values are also in line with top what we observed uh, experimentally and thus this particular transition state is the favored transition state. And here is the detailed diagram of the computational studies if in case if you want to have a look. In conclusion, 
uh, I can say we have developed a highly enhanced selective isothyuria catalyzed dynamic kinetic resolution method for the tetrasubstituted thalides. And we have probed the scope extensively and it all gave like excellent yield and excellent enhanced selectivity. A diverse range of anhydrides have been tested and all showed great uh, yield and enhanced selectivity, including those derived from the bioactive and pharmaceutical relevant drug based assets. We also have got one tetra substituted version of a pro drug called Telmetacin uh, via our method. And this high level of enhanced selectivity has been rationalized through DFT calculation and this oxygen heteroatom interaction with the cationic uh, intermediate identified as a key recognition for the enantio enrichment to this process. Lastly, I would want to thank all the members of our ADS group and uh, Alistair Goodfellow from the Michael Buhel group for the DFT studies and special thanks to Matthew for giving me the opportunity to speak on this platform. Thank you so much. Thanks for that insightful talk, Shugam. If you enjoyed this deep dive into his work, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to keep up with more exciting research content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Synthesis Workshop.